tonight on First at Nine, this Monday, the 26th of August, 2024. Risky Promises President Ranil Vikramasinghe warns of potential political, social and economic unrest if the current agreement with the International Monetary Fund is deviated from as promised by other presidential candidates. First in line, the National People's Power unveils its 2024 election manifesto promising to abolish the executive presidency and renegotiate with the IMF. Best for the nation. SJB presidential candidate Sajid Premadasa promises to end poverty within two years. SLPP candidate Namal Rajapaksa pledges to strengthen welfare programs to create more entrepreneurs. Sarvajana Balay candidate Dilit Jaivira promises bonuses and performance-based salary increments for state workers. Strengthened Revenue the Inland Revenue Department reveals that revenue collection and its divisions were strengthened over the past year. Obe Vishwasi Dino Sinsurain, then Lagamati Pharmacy in Labata the Hacker. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to Sri Lanka's premier primetime English news bulletin, Other Derana First at Nine. I'm Tarindu Mahendra, joining you live with the latest in Sri Lanka and from around the world. Taking you to tonight's top story, President Ranil Vikramasinghe has stresses that if the existing agreements with Sri Lanka's international creditors are breached, as pledged by other presidential candidates, the country will encounter another economic crisis by next February. Addressing an event yesterday, the head of state highlighted the need to reach the country's development goals in a timely manner as the creditor nations are keenly eyeing the country's growth trajectory. A meeting of legal professionals themed Lawyers for Economic Stability was held in Colombo last evening under the patronage of President Ranil Vikramasinghe. On the 10th of May 2022, Dr. Harsh Silva tweeted that they cannot rescue a country which is on the verge of collapse and wish the best of luck for those who were willing to take on that responsibility. You can check it as it is still there on his account. He can't even delete it as we have said that in public now. President Ranil Vikramasinghe assumed the presidency at a time when the country had already collapsed and brought it out of the crisis on his own. There's another tweet posted by the former Auditor General in 2022 warning that the dollar can appreciate it up to 500 rupees by the end of the year. However, at the moment, the rupee has appreciated and the dollar rate currently stands at 300 rupees. Foreign reserves have also shot up to 6 billion rupees. There's no time for experiments. There's a social media post in Tamil that said that Ranil Vikramasinghe will become president if the people vote for him in September, but that if they vote for someone else, then Vikramasinghe will have to assume the presidency next December. This conveys a serious message. We worked as a team to achieve this outcome within a period of two years. At the moment, we have arrived at agreements with 18 nations, the IMF, the World Bank and the ADB. We have to follow the economic framework that has been recommended to us. However, some people in the election valleys say that they will reduce taxes and provide subsidies. However, these election promises go against our agreement with the IMF. If one source of income is reduced, that lost revenue has to be earned through a different source. The income taxes would have to be raised if that comes down. We can 
can change our income sources, but we have to stick to with our target. What happens if we go against the IMF deal? Some say that they will have discussions with the IMF, but that would be pointless as now they don't have the authority to speak on behalf of the other 20 creditor nations. Is it an easy task to hold discussions with other nations? They are monitoring whether we are acting in line with the agreement and are concerned of the upcoming projects during the next six months. If this is amended again, then another crisis will occur by next February where the people will once again be stuck in long queues. They also claim that those who are involved in fraud will be punished. In 2015, the JAB requested the power to take measures against corruption in the country, so they were appointed to play that role under our governance. Accordingly, a Secretariat on Corruption was established in the country. Ananda Vijay Pala, who was a JAP member, was appointed to look into the matter. In my opinion, the person in charge should be either be in police or related to the country's judiciary. However, Ananda Vijay Pala was not a member of either of those institutions. He compiled 400 files and named the individuals who were mentioned in those documents. Afterwards, that information was transferred to the police, then to the Attorney General's department and finally to the courts. Some of those cases were successful but some were not. However, this is not my fault. I was responsible for funding for the entire process. Horizon Campus 2024 Intake 2. Register now. Crunchy goodness for hunger on the go. The presidential candidate of the Samagijana Balavege led Samagijana Sandane, opposition leader Sajit Premadasa says that a massive program will be launched nationwide by combining the best aspects of previous welfare programs including Samurdi and Aswasuma to eradicate poverty from Sri Lanka within two years. Addressing a rally in Trincomali, Premadasa said that the Kantele sugar factory will be converted into a successful venture under a public-private partnership under his leadership. Another public rally to support Samagijana Balavege led Samagijana Sandane's presidential candidate, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa, was held today in Seruvilla. The total debt owed by Sri Lanka to its creditors is 100 billion US dollars. No country in the world has such a huge debt burden. The JAP has no plan on how they are going to service debt. We even lack funds to repay the interest. A talented team with intelligence should handle this issue. This is not a joke. We will confirm to the people in Trincomalee that we will form the most powerful government in Sri Lankan history on the 22nd of September. The JDP said they would abolish the VAT. They pledged to increase the salaries of state sector employees. Are they planning to do this from the JVP's party fund? We saw what happened to the country following the reduction of VAT by Gota Beraja Paksa. We know that the people will not allow the fairy tales proposed by Anurukumara Disanayaka to become a reality. This is an era where most of the people in this country are suffering from extreme poverty and hardships. For those who experience severe hardships due to a lack of income and are unable to source the three meals for the day and feed their children by sourcing essential food items, we will launch a program to eradicate poverty by including the best aspects of Jana Savir, Samurdi, Aswasuma and Gamadiriya while excluding their shortcomings. Under this program that will be launched nationwide, a monthly provision of 20,000 rupees will be provided to each and every needy family. We will resurrect people from poverty within 24 months through a mechanism that is centered on consumption, investment, savings, production and exports. No one likes to continue to live in poverty. We are proud people. We do not like to beg to live. Everyone wants a strong livelihood. The relief that we will provide will prioritize women. In a bid to develop the area, we will convert the Kantale Sugar Factory into a successful venture under a private-public partnership which will be determined through a transparent procedure. The National People's Power has pledged to abolish the executive presidency and introduce a new parliamentary election system. The NPP revealed these commitments in their 2024 election manifesto, which was unveiled today. Additionally, the NPP promises to abolish pensions for former presidents and to limit the number of cabinet ministerial portfolios to 25 under their governance. Manifesto of the National People's Power themed A Thriving Nation, A Beautiful Life was unveiled today in Colombo. The unveiling event was attended by leader and presidential candidate of the National People's Power, Anur Kumar Disanayaka. 
පුරවැසියට ගරු නොකරන ඒ දේශපාලන සංස්කෘතිය වෙනස් කරන්න අපිට අවශ්‍යයි. ඒකත් එක්ක තමයි අපේ මේ ප්‍රතිපත්ති ප්‍රකාශනය ඊටමත්ම වැදගත් වෙන්නේ. අපි අපේ රට වෙනස් කරන්නත් අපේ රට දියුණු කිරීම සඳහා අපේ දැක්ම මොකද්ද කියන එක මේක තුල අන්තර්ගත වෙලා තියෙනවා. The manifesto proposes to eliminate the salary disparity between teachers and principals with immediate effect. Additionally, there are proposals to amend the Online Safety Act by removing clauses that impede freedom of expression. A monthly allowance of at least 10,000 rupees has been proposed for low-income families currently receiving Aswasam welfare benefits. It is also proposed to offer a 5% higher interest rate than the standard bank rate for fixed deposits held by senior citizens. Unemployed graduates will be provided with employment through a formal system with 20,000 of them directed towards the teaching profession. The proposal includes increasing the annual tax exemption limit for individuals from 1.2 million to 2.4 million rupees as part of the macroeconomic stabilization efforts of the national people's power. It is also proposed that point of sale machines and digital invoicing systems be introduced to streamline VAT collection. Additionally, it is proposed to renegotiate the terms of sri lanka's agreement with the international monetary fund it is mentioned that a development bank will offer collateral free loans of up to 10 million rupees to support small and medium scale enterprises the npp also proposes drafting a new constitution abolishing the executive presidential system and appointing a president without executive powers and introducing a new parliamentary election system The proposal states that pensions, special allowances and privileges granted to retired presidents and their associates will be abolished. The number of cabinet ministerial portfolios will be limited to 25 and it is proposed to eliminate state ministerial portfolios. Allowances paid for members of parliament for session participation as well as their pensions will be abolished. Additionally, measures such as prohibiting the hiring of family members for the personal staff of a member of parliament are included. It is proposed to remove duty free vehicle license system for MPs and provide only one vehicle per MP during their term. The manifesto also stipulates that politicians and government officials found guilty in Supreme Court cases related to the Easter Sunday terror attacks will be prosecuted under criminal law. Finally, it is proposed to abolish all repressive ordinances including the Anti-Terrorism Act to ensure the freedom of all individuals. Me paddhatiyama yali pratisthapane kirime weda piliwala thamai the entire system we are in is in crisis the npp is prepared to take on the responsibility of reinstating this system our stance on the economy is clear it consists of three key points our principle is to increase the country's production the benefits of the economy should be distributed fairly to everyone reaching the citizens at the ground level this is a matter of justice and humanity we will protect your property and ensure every cent is invested back into the citizens of this country we also encourage both local and foreign investors to bring investments we do not seek anything from you but we will ensure that your investments are beneficial to the country and its citizens we must take care of our citizens until we achieve these targets step by step many families cannot afford food or medicine so we propose providing them with a monthly allowance additionally we must remove vat on food education and health care sectors in a short period we are confident we can reduce fuel and electricity tariffs the npp government is committed to take care of every citizen fairly i invite you to join us and move forward together එවිනුවින් අපි හැම දෙනාම එකතු වෙමු පෙරටෙමු කියලා ආරාධනා කරමින් මම නතර වෙනවා බොහොම ස්තුතියි හැම දෙනාටම ජය වේවා කියලා ප්‍රාර්ථනා කරමු Presidential candidate of Sri Lanka Podu Jana Peramuna Namal Rajapaksa assesses that a government formed under his leadership will strengthen the samurdhi beneficiaries and convert them into entrepreneurs who can create wealth for the economy addressing a rally in Kurunagara Rajapaksa said that they will introduce investors to the rural areas of the country by creating a conducive environment An election campaign rally organized by the Sri Lanka Podu Jana Peramuna pledging its support to the party's presidential candidate Namal Rajapaksa was held in Dodangaslanda in Kurunagala today. Api me vedika vida kiyenawa api edat kade giya adat kade yanawa hetat mahinda rajapaksa mahatya wenuwen peni hitala Namal Rajapaksa mattuma me rata janadhipati karana kamma me sata nadiyat karanawa kiyena ka visheshayen matak karanawa api adarat viswasa karanawa samurdhi vyapare shakti mat karanno we still believe that the samurdhi beneficiaries have to be strengthened some people question why 5000 rupees are being distributed under the samurdhi program those who made those claims introduced a short lived program named aswasuma we believe that samurdhi is the only program that is capable of resurrecting people from poverty and strengthening the rural economy under a government form under my leadership i will launch initiatives to strengthen the samurdhi program we will convert samurdhi beneficiaries into entrepreneurs we will create the necessary path that enables 
requires the children of Samurthi beneficiaries to enter the local and global job markets. Without continuing the provision of allowances to Samurthi beneficiaries forever, we will implement a program that will convert Samurthi beneficiaries into a group of people that can create wealth for the economy. We will introduce investors to the rural areas. We will create a conducive environment in the rural areas for those investors. We will create an environment that facilitates the creation of employment. Not only will a government formed by us establish an industry in each and every electorate, we will ensure a government service with modernized technology as requested by the youth of this country. We will provide solutions for unemployment as well. Presidential candidate of the Sarvajana Bale, Dilit Jayavir, assessed that a government formed under the principles of the strategic plan proposed by his alliance expects to create state sector employees with an entrepreneurial mindset. Addressing an event in Anuradhapura, Jayavir proposes performance based salary increments to state sector employees in order to boost their performances. A meeting with the entrepreneurs in the Anuradhapura district was held last evening under the patronage of the presidential candidate of the Sarva Janabale, Dilit Jayavira. It is well evident that the wealth created by entrepreneurs is spent on the maintenance of the state service. However, there is a mistake in this analysis. There are certain cases that are an exception to the inefficiency in the state sector. We cannot say that the triforces are inefficient. Compared to the salary they earn, the service provided by the doctors is immense. The case is similar with the principal and teacher service. Under an entrepreneurial state concept, we expect to implant the concept of entrepreneurship in the minds of the state sector employees. If the state sector employee works with an entrepreneurial mindset, our feeling that the state sector is inefficient will decline. Similar to the practice in the private sector, state sector employees have to be given a bonus in addition to their salaries. Salary increments for state sector employees are given based on the number of years of service and examination results. Unlike in the private sector, no promotions are awarded for efficient government service. As a result, state sector employees have become discouraged. Under our strategic plan, we expect to create a state sector employee with an entrepreneurial mindset. For more of the latest, join us on the other side. Start dishwasher belly till Indul Basu in Sede. Start dishwasher magic topic. Crunchy goodness for hunger on the go. Chandul sabe khage mana pesiga TV, sing TV sabha supiri deal. Welcome back. Now let's hear what politicians from across the political spectrum have to say ahead of the presidential polls. The JVP unveiled their election manifesto today titled A Thriving Nation, A Beautiful Life. They propose to increase the income tax and the tax exemption limit. If that proposal is implemented, the government will lose revenue of at least 65 billion rupees. How do they plan to cover this revenue? What is their alternative for this? They have not mentioned that. They are trying to push the country into a crisis like it was in 2022 by lowering the country's tax revenue. This is merely a wish list that cannot become a reality. During former President Chandrika Bandaranayaka Kumar Thunga's tenure, Andhra Kumar Dizanayaka was the Minister of Agriculture. However, he did not construct any reservoirs or any cooperatives. Like former President Gotabe Rajapaksa, Anur Kumar Dishanayaka, Kedi Lal Kanta and Vijita Herath resigned from their ministerial portfolios within one and a half year. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa vacated the premiership. Myself and 20 other parliamentarians suggested that Sajid Premadasa accept power. But he said he could accept without majority in parliament and shied away from responsibility. Then I asked Harsha if they were planning to accept power after the country stabilizes. He said that he was powerless to do anything. As his leader refused to accept responsibility. I was disappointed in Sajid Premadasa. Sajid 
If you want the traditional corrupt politics, you can choose any of the other candidates. If you want modernized politics that is required internationally, choose Anur Kumar Dhanayake. It does not matter whether there are 39 or 109 presidential candidates. Only one candidate will win. It is Anur Kumar Dhanayake. Parte jana dipati kia la kia ni ni kan hikanan ni ni. Jana dipati kia na putga dia ta. Desa pal na pau siak kia na tona. Ona ema abio kia ka muna dili na. Kai waru ka ni na beka na pulwa ka wakna. Ala bangla de shen si duwe chewa ni ma sa tuna jing ka laga na wuna na. Kali ni tuna si ka ma hatia ni na wuna ni kuna chan ni di. The Election Commission today handed over the postal ballots for the 2024 presidential election to the Postal Department. The 712,319 postal ballots will be handed over to the certifying officers tomorrow ahead of postal voting, which is scheduled to take place on the 4th, 5th and 6th of next month. The Election Commission also announced that nominations for the LPTA Pradesh Sabha in the 2024 local government elections will take place from the 9th to the 12th of September. In the meantime, Foreign Minister Ali Sabri welcomed the European Union's election observation mission which arrived in Sri Lanka to monitor this year's presidential election. The Postal Department today received the reserved packets containing the registered postal ballot papers to be distributed to the postal voters of the 2024 presidential election. The 712,319 registered postal ballots were handed over to the Postal Department by returning officers at 25 centres across the island. The ballot papers will be distributed to the certifying officers tomorrow. Postal voting for the presidential election will be held on the 4th, 5th and 6th of September, while the 11th and 12th of September have been allocated as additional dates for postal voters who were unable to mark their votes on the initial dates. Meanwhile, the distribution of official polling cards for the 2024 presidential election is scheduled to commence on the 3rd of September. Additionally, the 8th of September has been designated as a special day for polling card distribution. Concurrently, the Postal Department has cancelled the leave of all of its employees until the conclusion of the presidential election. In the meantime, the returning officer in charge of Alpitya Pradesh Sabha published the announcement regarding the acceptance of nominations for the local government body in the 2024 local government elections. Accordingly, nominations will be accepted at the Goal District Secretariat from the 9th to the 12th of September, while election deposits can be placed from today until 12 noon on the 11th of September. Meanwhile, Minister of Foreign Affairs Ali Sabri met with Member of the European Parliament Nacho Sanchez Amor, the Chief Observer of the EU Election Observation Mission to Sri Lanka for the 2024 presidential election at the Foreign Ministry premises this afternoon. The mission arrived in Sri Lanka to observe the presidential election following an invitation by the Election Commission. This will be the seventh instance the European Union has deployed an election observation mission to Sri Lanka. During the meeting, the Foreign Minister assured the Sri Lankan government's support to the mission in ensuring an independent and transparent election. Welcome back. Deputy Commissioner General of the Department of Inland Revenue, Saman Shanta, revealed that the department has established new units such as the Risk Management Unit and a unit to monitor high wealth individuals to strengthen the tax collection process. He made these comments while addressing a media briefing organized by the Presidential Media Center today. During the COVID-19 period, the Department of Inland Revenue could not effectively contribute to the revenue collection process. However, with the country returning to normalcy since last year, we were able to strengthen our revenue collection measures. Last year, our revenue collection exceeded targets. During the recent past, progress has been observed in most of the divisions in the department. Various units, including those in charge of revenue collection and unpaid taxes, Auditing and administration have recorded progress. We established several units within the department both this year and last year. One such unit is the Risk Management Unit. It analyzes the payment patterns of taxpayers. 
Steps will be taken to notify the relevant authorities of the individuals whose tax payment pattern is inappropriate and conduct investigations in that regard. There is another unit in the department that focuses on high wealth individuals in Sri Lanka. The unit investigates their tax payment patterns and the level of compliance with paying taxes. The unit which was launched this year is currently in the initial stage. However, we are making progress in developing the unit by gathering the necessary information on high wealth individuals. Uh, the Colombo Bourse closed in red today as a result of price losses in counters such as Hatton National Bank, Sampat Bank and Commercial Bank with turnover crossing 544 million rupees. The benchmark All Share Index closed 1.43% lower at 11,199.58 points while the S&P Sri Lanka 20 fell by 2% to close at 3,189.11 points. Trading volume on the index fell to 31.6 million shares from 37.9 million in the previous session. The food, beverage and tobacco sector was the top contributor to the market turnover, while the capital goods sector came in second. Foreign investors closed as net buyers purchasing shares worth 52.1 million rupees, while domestic investors were net sellers offloading shares worth 551 million rupees. Senior analyst of Capital Alliance, Sahajit Nazar, joins us now with a few thoughts to round off our Market Scene View segment for the week. The All Share Price Index decreased by 1.24% from 11,504 to 11,362. The S&P 20 also declined by 1.42% to close at 3,254. Market turnover declined by 15% to around 3.1 billion rupees from 3.7 billion rupees. The Treasury bill auction for 120 billion rupees was also fully accepted, with the three months and six months bill yields increasing by three and twelve basis points to 9.4. 3% and 9.8% respectively and the 12 month bill yields declining by two basis points to 10.01%. And that's all the news for today. Thank you for joining and have a good night.